Uh, I'm Eric Kent. I'm a postdoc researcher from the Mars Research University. I'm working mainly in a game artificial intelligence, so I'm not uh, an historian or, or an archaeology guy. Uh, um, this is just a pleasure for me to speak for the first time about this new field, the digital archaeology. Games are ubiquitous. Uh, almost everyone plays games. If you look at any part of the world in the past, uh, in the present, and I'm sure also in the future, even on this building, I see a lot of people playing in their smartphone with a lot of games. Um, and of course, all the cultures have some own games. So you can see the games is a cultural cortex like a cultural heritage, an insight into the cultural past. Uh, sometimes a game is also a proof of cultural contact between some people, between some civilization. But unfortunately, we don't know enough much about things about ancient games. Of course, we find a lot of archaeological evidence, some boards, some pieces. For example, you have here uh, the main game, is an ancient game from Egypt. Uh, it's played on a, on a spiral board. Uh, you use some different kind of pieces, some smaller, some bigger. But, we're, but we are not sure of the rules of that game because we never find the record of rules. And that thing can be explained because by tradition in a lot of cultures, uh, the rules were transferred uh, between two generations only by oral. So when we try to uh, rebuild the rules of a game, uh, we, we have to work only with the, our evidence we find. And consequently, for all the ancient games, we have a huge variety of, uh, rule set, of possible rule sets. And maybe the original rule set is uh, are lost. Uh, this is an example of a, a possible cultural contact. Uh, in India, we know that game, Pachisi. And in uh, ancient Mexico, uh, another game called Patsoni. If you look, the board is really, really similar. Uh, it's a cross board uh, with some special cross at each extremity. Uh, this is just a picture, but if you look, the real board this is really similar. But the rules are different. According to some different uh, research, some study on these two games, uh, the first one explains this is just an evidence of an early contact between India and ancient Mexico. In another study uh, of Erasmus, he says this is just a coincidence. And the last one says, uh, we assume this is a coincidence, it's uh, the last word result. Unfortunately, we are not sure uh, if that game is a proof or not uh, of cultural contact between these two people. And on all that study, we don't find any mathematical, mathematical models or any sort of tools uh, to prove that. For another example, uh, Wally from Usman, Senet. Senet is the oldest game find uh, in all the history from ancient Egypt, uh, from uh, 3100 before Christ. Of course, we found a lot of sense in a different uh, time, different uh, place, but again, no words. So one question, is it a game or something else for religion or for tradition or for something like that? If you look the hieroglyphic arts, you see some, you see two pairs playing to that games with two colors for the pieces and some different starting position. On the board, there are also some different symbols on it, but we are not sure if this is the entry or exit point for that game. And for all the study, for uh, this uh, kind of study, we have a dozen of reconstruction and again, no mathematical models or no software tools to prove if one of them is uh, better or not. So the goal of the digital archaeology, uh, a new field using a lot of different uh, benefits from a lot of other fields like history, mathematics, cultural study, archaeology, computer science and artificial intelligence, is to create uh, a link between some traditional games today and some modern game AI techniques. In the traditional games today, we find a lot of historical analysis, but some f only some few uh, mathematical analysis. In the game AI today, since uh, now some years, we have a lot of really great results. Uh, I'm sure you know AlphaGo from Google, for example. We have a lot of uh, really good artificial intelligence on it, and it's possible to apply the same algorithm to some other field. Unfortunately, until now, uh, this, this field, uh, the game AI, uh, has a little interest in historical context. So the goal of the digital archaeology is to bridge this gap. This project uh, is uh, called Digital Uden Project. It's possible thanks to an URC from the Union European of 2 million euros for five years. It was launched in the Maastricht University at the beginning of the last year. Uh, we have currently a team of five people. Cameron Brown uh, is the principal investigator of this project, created and finds the grant. 
I'm the sole governor child of the project, the GAM system in general, uh, mainly working on our uh, general GAM system. You, you will see that in some slide. Mathieu works mainly on the data mining and visualization. Denis Summers is uh, our uh, PhD working mainly on feature learnings to make a link between modern games and ancient games. And Walter Quist uh, joined the team in July. Uh, is uh, our new cultural and historical expert. But we work also with a lot of uh, different uh, experts on the uh, ancient game uh, today. The objective of this project is the, fo the first objective of this project is to model the full range of traditional strategic games through a route recorded human history. With that, as you can see on the two examples at the beginning of this uh, presentation, we would like to reconstruct the missing information with an improved rigor, so in using mathematical model and one and a new software provided by our project. And another goal is to map a spread of games for each game, of course, associated with the mathematical ID behind that throughout history. So to sum up, the goal of this project is to improve our understanding of the development of games in using modern AI technicals. So we define a new field uh, with this ID, like that. Uh, the digital archaeology is to use uh, the modern computational technicals to improve our understanding of the development of traditional games. The methodology to do that, first one, we have to identify the 1,000 most important traditional strategy games. To do that, of course, we refer to a lot of uh, different books or publications, but we work also with a lot of different uh, historical uh, people uh, working on the study uh, of some ancient games. Uh, mainly from the game studio uh, community, if you know that. Uh, with this uh, 1000 North uh, game, we would like to model them digitally, thanks to LUDEM. I will explain what is LUDEM in some slide. Uh, and we would like to look at them historically and culturally from all of the data we can find in some source. With all that data and this modelization, we can find some relationship between uh, the games and also the different components of the games, so the LUDEM. Uh, in using data mining and phylogenetics. And from our results we can find with our uh, project, we will lack some feedback into the, uh, our reconstruction. Of course, this is really important to understand. We don't deal with certainty uh, for any kind of results we can find because we cannot be sure of our results, but we can uh, associate it to any kind of result, a probabilistic estimate uh, with some different criteria. The scope of this project is focused mainly of, uh, on a traditional game strategy. Uh, we define traditional like a game with no inventor or no property owner, and strategy, a game with mental style. So, for example, board game, tying game, or card games. We are interested uh, by game between uh, 3100 uh, before Chris, so the date estimate for Senate, uh, the oldest game, uh, to the almost the year 1900. We speak about uh, the 1,000 most different examples, but you can also uh, working with some variants or some reconstruction building by our project. And uh, we estimate uh, the, we have to evaluate something like 1 million world sets. Of course, this is just impossible for human, or maybe with a big team and for one century, so we don't want that. But with artificial intelligence and with computer science, that task is really possible. So, only then is a game name. Uh, it's an unit of game relative information. You can see that like a building, uh, building blocks for games. If you, make, you want to make an analogy, a LUDEM is like the DNA for games. A LUDEM encapsulates the key concept of a game, so a LUDEM can encapsulate any mathematical ID behind the games. Uh, David Parlett, an expert in uh, uh, history, uh, game study analysis, in 2007, write on this book, uh, a rhythm is an amount of play comparable to the distinct from a game component or an instrument of play. This is a really good definition in our, all the projects. We follow the definition to define our rhythm. So consequently, uh, with the definition in mind, uh, if we can do that with computation science, computer science uh, the project can uh, model any, any aspect of a game if this aspect can be modeled mathematically. For the project, we use Java. Java is a programming language. But it's also possible with some others, of course. And we can model any equipment or worse. So, to make an example, you have, uh, you have here an example of a rhythm. So, tiling square is to define a board game tiling by square. Size 3 3 is to define a bar of size 3 3. And for example, you can define a board like that. So, this is a square board tiling by square of size 3 3. That kind of board can be used to define a game. You have an example here 
And directly in games to show, uh, tic tac toe, everyone knows tic tac toe. Uh, you have two players, white and black, the board defined before, and your only move is to move one of few pieces on any empty state. And you win the game if you make a Linus free. So this is um, this is how we can define games with rhythm. Thanks to that, our game description can be uh, are just a text file using some symbolic expression. With that, we can define a rhythm suite to define the rules of a game. Uh, of course, conform to our grammar, but the grammar is generating automatically by our system. So, for example, here you have a possible games. We are not sure in order to if it's a game or not. Uh, called Rune Mirrors. Uh, you follow almost the same uh, rules of a game, a family, a very famous game called Swim and Moist, maybe you know that. It's possible to define all the rules of that game just with this uh, data. And we can add also to that file some metadata, anything we want, anything we know about that game, to put that in a database to uh, create a model. So we use this, this game description because it provides a lot of benefits. First one, it's really simple to define new games just on with some minutes or seconds in writing directly the rules with them. This is really powerful. Uh, our approach can model the full range of games. Really compact, the file, the file size are smaller than a QR code, so really, really small. And it's also possible, thanks to that, to provide uh, in the future application to smartphone and using some really small uh, file. This is comprehensible. You can uh, understand the rules directly and within the rhythm, but it's also possible thanks to many algorithms to translate the rhythm directly in English. So of course, anyone speaking English can do that. Uh, really, really efficient uh, because in game AI, another field exists called general game playing. On that, uh, on that field, it's possible to apply some uh, artificial intelligence technicals to any games, but our system is really faster than that system. For example, for chess, we are 10,000 times faster. This is Covenant, we can easily manipulate or evolve a game, it's not too hard to, to get a new variant or reconstruction. And Gradula, because the game is composed of uh, different rhythms, so we can uh, break down the game to understand if a game is used or not, a mathematical concept behind it. So this is the system, it's called Ludi. Uh, Ludi is a general game system, with it it's possible to model, to play, to evaluate, optimize, or even generate any games, anything is possible. Uh, on this system is mostly uh, organized in two parts. The first one is a rhythm library. Uh, each rhythm is associated with a mathematical ID, and a rhythm is just a class in Java. If you use many rhythm, you can create a rhythm three, and a rhythm three is a game. We can store that game in a database associated with historical data. With just this organization, we have almost all the system, and it's possible to uh, realize any uh, anything you want uh, with a game. So this is an example uh, of our interface. interface. Uh, we try to keep something clean, abstract, and informative, but also attractive because we want also to provide uh, this system to game designer too. Uh, so we try to, to, to make the thing really usable and also practical for analysis. Uh, this, is, this is not currently available, it's almost uh, finished for the first public release, but in July, if you are interested, you can go to that website, ludi.games, to get it of course free and it's possible to apply any kind of uh, research you want on it and of course to play if you want just to play. Uh, with our project we have so many many possibilities. Uh, uh, for this talk I'm focused only on the reconstruction and the uh, creation of a spread of games. So for the reconstruction, uh, as I said, we have some evidence, some partial rules or equipments and we follow two main ideas uh, to create uh, some possible reconstruction. The first one is an historical authenticity, the second one, a game quality. For the historical authenticity, it's possible to rebuild a game automatically with a combination of them in correlation with a cultural and historical context of the proof, of the evidence. For the game quality, we have a lot of different metrics to compute it. For example, uh, we have a, a metric to understand the longer of a strategy. Uh, if the strategy is really too small, for example, if you can win with only one move, this is not possible to defend a game like that. But if the strategy is also really too big, something like uh, 10,000 moves to win, of course, it's not a game for human, so it's also not possible. Uh, so we, we have a lot of metrics like that to compute it. And from that, with our uh, system, we can uh, build some plausible rules uh, sets associated with a probabilistic confidence for each of them compute for our true metrics. So for example, in Slovakia, uh, some people find that bomb, 
is a 17 by 15 or 16. We are not exactly sure because it's almost uh, image damage. So we are sure this is not Go. This is in, a game we don't know. Uh, use two colors and one or two sides for the pieces. Again, not sure because some of them are bigger, some of them are smaller. So we're not sure if it's just uh, not perfect for this period or if you use two sides. And Eric Schroeders, uh, the creator of the game museum in Zurich, explained uh, for human, this is just an impossible task to find the rules with just that. But maybe Ludi can turn this impossible task to a difficult one. So according to him, it's possible. And we try to work on it. To do that, our approach is to model everything we know directly in the dam. So we have air in green, blue, and red, uh, everything we know possibly defined. And uh, you know also everything we don't know. So we don't know the starting rules, the playing rules, as the ending rules for that game. We can uh, associate with everything we know some combination of freedom from similar period, region, or culture. And we can maximize the historical authenticity and the game quality. From that, we compute some different playable rule sets with a confidence estimate. So this is one uh, side of the project. The other side is the game speed of the games. To do that, we are in collaboration with another team in uh, Madrid, working mainly on uh, political maps with a uh, software created by them called Geochrome. They create so mathematical maps between uh, 3000 before Christ to today for almost 2000 civilization. And they use a database with political boundaries, historical sites, historical events, and historical works. And they provide some results. Uh, first one, a cultural location. Uh, with GPS coordinate and yeah, they can find the dominant civilization at one point and one time. They provide also some historical rules from expedition rules, trade rules, military rules. And now, uh, last uh, result was a cultural distance. Uh, that thing is very important for us, for, for us, yeah. Uh, in input, they put two GPS coordinates and some years. And in output, a degree of uh, possible contact between different civilizations. Uh, it's also possible to do almost the same thing with uh, the game ID with a Ludem profile. Like I said, a game is composed here about Ludem and it's also possible to trace the game from their occurrence. If we can do that, we can also trace the occurrence, uh, the Ludem in the history and geographical, geographically uh, because we can break down a, a game into the component Ludem and correlate them with the our occurrence to find the nearest and closest matches between them with associated to some probability. And from that, we can get something close to that. Uh, one Ludem can be can begin uh, in one point in the, our all the literature and resources from the history. And we can correlate that with some uh, trade routes, exploration routes on each accounts to know if this ID was uh, in some different place at different time on the history. Of course, this is just two main ideas uh, of the system of uh, our project. Uh, if you want to know more, you can go to our website, ludem.eu, and if you are testing by uh, the system, uh, it will be uh, free and available at this website. Thank you.